Show me the future. Yes. The future as it will and must be. I will not allow any to alter its course. I have to say, I feel this aroma in the air, that at least for YouTube and fan forums, there is some sort of division in the Zelda fandom. I've learned through negative reception of those who defend the Zelda timeline that people could see the Legend of Zelda series in two different ways. One, a connected timeline from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom to that of the beloved cherished previous titles, and the other, a fun sandbox series of two games that don't need a timeline and that the previous games are irrelevant and should stay in the past. Nintendo Zelda team developers have come forward and addressed that this belief on gameplay first and canon story second went full ride with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. They also address that it should stay that way and that the fans' interpretations are essential but also not definitive. Otherwise, it would hinder the creativity of those recent blockbuster games and possibly hinder the creativity of games going forward. This drives the passion to dismantle and demolish a Zelda timeline even further. These conversations and debates have stirred up passionate discussion, making it a topic for someone like me to dive further into. Is this really a battle of Nintendo and the new fans versus the veteran fans who are passionate of speculation and theorizing? And if it is, why? What does it accomplish? Well, let's take a look. First of all, it's clear that through pretty recent interviews by IGN, Game Informer, etc., that the lead producer and director of both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom want to fully move on from the previous Zelda conventions absolutely, and not look back. It is for sure that the Zelda team wants to keep this approach to open-air games and make those games have greater precedence than any story or lore implications. With statements like this constantly being said in many interviews in the last couple of weeks and over the years, the tone has been set. This goes hand in hand with newer fans. I have a friend who does not care at all about any previous Zelda games. He literally tells me I don't care about playing anything before Breath of the Wild. Only giving his focus and attention to the world of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. I began to meet more people who have only played those games and became fans of the series through those games as well. And combining this with the outstanding sales revenue from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom respectively, it's clear that the series has been reborn to many people and marked their relative interpretation of their own perception of the beginning of the franchise. This even goes as far for some to give negative reception to those who don't like Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom and those people wanting to take the concept of the timeline doesn't matter to a greater extent. I have seen this in my own videos, especially with my recent unedited and unhinged video discussing my not so super supportive opinion on Tears of the Kingdom. Zelda lore and theorizing discussions have also died down among more popular Zelda YouTubers, so it's clear that there exists a greater population of Zelda fans that just don't give a freaking rip about the continuity and timeline of the games. Which is unfortunate to people like me who loved it growing up and talking about it before the days of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Now enter those who have addressed this and in response provided arguments supporting Zelda lore and disapproved of Tears of the Kingdom's story revelations. Bandit Games' Mass Nintendo Bandit has come forward and provided an excellent discussion on why Tears of the Kingdom isn't as good as everyone thinks it is, and he had to even reiterate himself in more videos. Many other YouTubers have addressed negative opinions on Tears of the Kingdom as well, which aren't just limited to the lack of established lore or story, but also to the gameplay and content. I have even done it myself, and I've also done it with my friend Nishquick Pops throughout our live streams recently. And it was through those responses in the comments to those videos that prompted me for a discussion like this. The Zelda fanbase has been split in some sort of fashion and I think this was for a reason. Enter the franchise Star Wars, a franchise that has had many divisive and controversial creative choices since it was acquired by Disney Entertainment. 
This is a heavily dedicated fan base that pays strong attention to the continuity and lore, and many of them have felt wronged or robbed with some of the franchise's recent movie and show releases. For example, many believe Luke Skywalker's character was ridiculed and is not accurate to how the character would be written according to the lore and character development that the series established prior to Disney's acquisition. This sequel trilogy was handled in a really interesting way and this conversation kind of goes further with how they handled Rey's character and lore. Of course, all this drama caused George Lucas loyalists to take a stand on how the series should have been handled, and then you have other parts of the fan base that either don't care at all or try their best to sit through what does matter and hoping for creative decisions that don't get them upset. While this might have not been ideal for consumers, it still caused conversation to be made and caused emotional responses throughout the communities. Which in today's day and age, big corporations believe that this division of conversation could drive sales revenue even further. So did this happen with The Legend of Zelda series? While The Legend of Zelda series isn't as big as Star Wars, its popularity has grown significantly and could be another thing to discuss or debate among the community. As I said, these types of conversations help with brand awareness. While I won't necessarily encourage emotional and passionate debate among fan communities, I stand with defending the lore and timeline of the Legend of Zelda series. I believe it is important and it does matter and I will probably lean with fans who played all or most of the games over those who only played Breath of the Wild and or Tears of the Kingdom, the open air ones. That doesn't mean I don't respect newer Zelda fans. I do respect them, I just think that they are unfortunately choosing to miss out on a wonderful catalog of games with amazing lore to dissect and discuss and that also have great gameplay. So to end on a positive note, Awanuma has revealed in a recent interview with IGN that, quote, there is an essential Zelda I feel we need to stay true to. We are still testing things, exploring our options, we haven't landed anywhere at this point we're still seeing what we can do. This was said during an interview that did devalue the timeline, but it also means to me that the ideal Zelda isn't limited to the grander inspiration that Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom established, but rather something greater than that. With a likely indication that we are done with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom's Hyrule anyway through other developer interviews, I'm sure that the next new original Zelda title will be something we can all look forward to, enjoy, and dissect for even greater conversations. This was Skylink, and have a blessed day.